give him a choice about cutting down the nuts, you know? I, I had nothing to do with it, so um, I came off the court and they told me that, that they weren't doing it, so. Um, you like that? Um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is, you know. Um, those days of you telling your players this is what you should do, you know, those are over. Uh, I've always left it up to the players anyway. You know, whatever makes you feel great, go ahead and do it. And um, that's what they chose to do. When was your last water bath before tonight? That was bad. I mean, usually it's just, and I know I probably deserved it because I started it a few years ago. You know, they were all happy and sitting there and I walked in and I just, destroyed water bottles all over them and so I think they were ready for me this time and it was totally my fault for falling into this trap <laughs> and now I'm trying to walk around with something that's not mine and my underwear stuck to my ass and <laughs> soaking wet Jesus Christ <laughs> uh, your hair is dry though that was fast <laughs> Yeah, my hair dries fast, I guess. It's not much of it to dry anymore. <laughs> anymore. This team, right, you, they, I know it's March, they would play until they have to be scraped off the floor, but how do they still get some the tank in this um, uh, That's been my biggest worry, um, you know, going into the tournament, has been at what point, at what point does it, does it catch up to us, you know? And I don't know when that is. Um, you know, I, I did see moments in the Duke game where you could really see the effect that it was having. I didn't see it today, though. Today we looked, you know, the kids came over a couple of times and they, you know, they commented on it that, you know, hey, I, you know, we've, I, I think we, you know, we feel, you know, we feel fresh. Like we feel like we've got, we've, we've got some extra energy. Uh, so sometimes, you know, the adrenaline just gets flowing and, but they're young, you know. <laughs> I'm more tired than they are. Talk about the way the freshmen came through for you, especially Q and Ice. We really needed, we really needed something, you know. Um, KK with the fouls, Ash, you know, needed a, a a breather. Q's dying to play, you know. She's like a, you know, she's like a caged, you know, lion in there. She just fidgety on the bench all the time she wants to get in and play um, and I thought she was scrappy and, and you know made one of her patented threes you know that she makes and and then I thought Ice gave us some great minutes you know some great great minutes um, I mean what better you know you're a freshman and you're playing in the in, in, you know in a game to go to the final four and your teammates and your coaches are counting on you I mean you know what, what could be better than that? For Nika and Aaliyah to not have this, have to be their last game and you find them for I mean, they've given their heart and soul and yeah. everything else they have to this program. Yeah, they have. And a couple of rebounds that Nika got down at the defensive end were just, she had no business getting them. But there's just something, obviously, in the way she plays and the, the toughness that she that she brings. And, um, and it, you have to have, you know, she cannot score any points and still have a huge impact on the game. Um, and I thought tonight was a perfect example of that. Um, and Aaliyah, you know, the big, that big N1, you know, that she had, crucial time in the game. Um, you know, they all, they all did their part, you know. Um, Paige and Aaliyah, you know, they've been putting up points for us you know, they've been the two constants. Other people helped, and uh, they did that again today. And everybody else did a little bit, and here we are. What worked so well to contain Juju? I know she made some big shots, but I mean, she didn't necessarily, you know, go off in a way that ended up hurting us. Yeah, um, we thought that, you know, and coaches. You know, Morgan had the sky report, and Morgan's got 17 different ways that we're going to guard this. You know, 15 different ball screen coverages and 12 different 
shadow coverages and all this and I felt like you know I was in, you know, playing an NFL game or something like come on guys and then you know we just said look kid gets 25 every night we're not going to hold her to 10 you know we just can't let her get 40 and it can't be easy so we tried to have somebody always in the in the general vicinity whenever whenever she got the ball and put her on the floor and started going that it was never going to be just her attacking somebody one on one um, but she's so good at getting to her spots and she's so good and she's so big and strong at creating contact and finishing through contact uh, just doesn't play like a freshman at all so um, it was as difficult a matchup as we've had but you know, I think we made her work exceptionally hard to get the points that she got. Just the, the toughness that you guys, like uh, uh, Aaliyah, Paige, Nika, were all out there for 40 minutes. Like Aaliyah ripped yeah. her mask off a couple of times. She <laughs> shot a couple free throws without it. Then she put it back. Like it was, it was like a long. Yeah, we asked the rep, can she get her, can she get her mask? We said no. Like, going the other way, whatever. So I almost was going to say, keep it off. But I knew she wasn't going to play without it. Just, just, That's just, just tough kids, you know. Tough. Yeah, they just, they don't look it, you know. Like when, when they, I told the coaches, like when they go out there and they, they shake hands with the other team, you know, you look at USC and their size and everything. Our guys go shake hands. I'm like, who's going to take these guys seriously? Maybe that's how we win. They don't take them seriously. <laughs> they go, we're going to lose to these guys. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, you know, notoriously UConn, a team no one takes seriously in women's basketball. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, well, we used to roll out, you know. Nice. A couple of six three, six four, six five guys, and our guards were six one, and everybody went, "Holy, holy! How are you going to beat those guys now?" I don't know that we're that imposing when we walk in anymore. <laughs> Who's going to be afraid of Paige? Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> you had a lot of love in the building today. What was like to get this win in front of them, especially after how Notre Dame did? For who? For the players. Well, you know, the the games that the games that we won all. You know, they all taught us something. You know, we all did something that we were proud of. The games that we lost, that taught us a lot that we weren't proud of. Um, and I think defensively, I think we've, been, we've become much more connected, much more reliant on each other and helping each other. Um, and then maybe that wasn't there back, you know, back in December. So we've kind of grown into that. Um, and but you know, and, and your defense is going to give you a chance all the time. But you know, we said today's today's game, you know, has to be won with our offense. I said, look, Duke's one of the best defensive teams in the country. They held us to fifty, what three, and they lost. So just being the best defensive team in the country doesn't really matter. You still have to put points on the board. So I said, our defense is hopefully going to give us a chance. But we need to convert the opportunities that we get from, you know, we had the long stretches where we did do that. What's the overriding emotion getting back to the Final Four with this team and all that it's been through? Uh, I don't know. I just uh, feel like I actually would have been okay. Like, if they ran out of gas today and there was nothing left, I would have been like, hey, listen, we did about as much as we could do. We just didn't have anything left, you know. I remember in 1996, we lost a game in the Final Four in overtime, and Jamel played all 45 minutes or something like that. And she just walked over and was crying, Coach, I'm sorry, man, I got nothing left. So sometimes that happens, you know, and you're okay with that. But somehow, you know, they found it, and we're playing again next week. I'm not jumping up and down about it. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I'll be excited tomorrow. But right now, I'm just thinking about, man... I'm so tired <laughs> that, you know, but we'll, uh, we'll travel tomorrow and uh, we'll get right back at it on Wednesday. That's the other thing that sucks about on the women's side. <laughs> we just played Monday and now you get there Tuesday and you get Wednesday, Thursday and you play Friday. The guys play Saturday and Sunday. They don't play again until the following Saturday. And all they want to talk about is where the regionals are. How about you make it fair for the players? to get some rest so but at least you're playing US, USC tied it with 7 minutes left and you called a timeout then out of that timeout or very soon after that timeout you 
uh, went on a 10-0 run that pretty much sealed it. Just what was the difference down the stretch? Uh, I think we we started maybe becoming more intentional with where our shots were coming from. I think we caught them a couple times in transition, not getting back. You know, uh, I think uh, Mika hit a big three right in front of our bench. Um, uh, Paige made a couple great plays. Um, you know, I don't think I said anything earth shattering in the timeout. Um, you know, we we just kept harping all the time on what I'm sorry, what the defensive covers need to be, and to stick with it, stick with it, and. And spacing, those were the two things that we really, really, really just kept hammering away at. You know? And our spacing was great in the second half. You know, we made it really tough for them, and we got inside more often in the second half. So we just kept harping on those things. And we needed a breather. So they tied up, the breather, we got a little bit of a run. I think that's maybe deflating for them to, you know, hey, we're feeling great, we tied it up, let's go. We got them, and then we come out with a 10 nothing run. So, yeah, then we thought, yeah, we're done. <laughs> Have you had any moments with Paige? I mean, I know you were up in the press with her, but anything just special in celebrating that moment with her, given everything that she went through to get back here? Um, not yet, really. Not yet. I'm sure when we get back to the hotel uh, or at some point. Um, but... Yeah, they're. I think they're they're enjoying each other's company right now, and, and they're saving their celebrations with for each other. Um, I'm sure there'll be be a lot more when we get back. You've talked a couple times about just how far off the final four felt a few months ago. I mean, is there a point when you started to feel like this was possible again? Uh, Jamel kept saying, Tanya kept saying that it's possible. They kept saying, Jamel just kept saying, let's ride the wave, and when it crashes, it crashes. That's it. Me, I was like, there's no wave, there's no nothing. It's just we're, we're hanging on for dear life, you know. It's, it's a miracle that we're even playing in these games. And, and yet, just when I thought, all right, here it comes, they would do something that would just make you feel like maybe they got something left. Like even this morning, I walked in, you know, to breakfast and, you know, they're like sitting there like that. Then, you know, we're ready to go. I said, Hootie, how we doing? She goes, great, man. We got a lot of energy. We feel good. They're in great spirits. I'm like, really? That doesn't look like that to me. But then, you know, when it's time to play. So, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, they believe in themselves and they're making me believe in them even more if making this sweet 16 you compare that to childbirth and being a miracle uh, but it's making the final four uh, what does miracle. that mean that, that is that is that is honest to god man i cannot believe that i, I can't believe that this is that this is actually happening i, I had i had no idea you know i, I <laughs> I, 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 if you had told me like what are you going to be doing next week if you told me three weeks ago what are you doing April 6th 5th, 6th, 7th so well, I'm going to go to Florida play a couple of days of golf and then you know relax a little bit so I'm going to Cleveland instead <laughs> wouldn't you rather be in Cleveland than Florida yeah, anyway? beautiful. I'd rather be in Cleveland at this time of the year 100% Oh, go to rock and roll. Thanks, you know.